All right. Thank you guys for joining in. Um, the idea of this is to make some live streams using some vSync techniques. And there's, it's not going to be any tutorial. Um, if you want uh, more kind of a lesson or something like that, we are hosting four workshops at Music Hackspace. You can see the links below. Uh, it's also uh, the link of my Patreon website, which uh, I regularly upload there um, more vSync patches and also uh, the beta versions of vSync before they come out to the public. So make sure you subscribe. And yeah, so I really didn't know what to do for today. So a friend suggested me to make this kind of glitchy machine which has RGB displacement, some noise, um, some really simple stuff that I can cover uh, totally in this live stream. Um, there are, of course, several ways of doing this in VSYN. I'm just going to show you some of them. Um, so you can check out the differences between making this kind of effect one way or the other. And then I'm just going to open up the mic. And if you want to um, make suggestions, add questions or whatever, you can uh, drop a line in the chat and I'm going to read them uh, afterwards and, and we can have some fun. So, okay, I'm gonna disappear just for one sec uh, from, your, from your screen. And I'm just going to show you my desktop. All right. Okay, so yeah, you're seeing my desktop now and I'm going to add, open a new patch. And since I'm going to make this effect that it's basically made for the camera, I'm just going to go um, right click on an empty patcher paste from vSync and select camera default, which is going to add me some modules that will make working with the camera really easy. All right, so um, I'm gonna turn on the render, turn on the camera, and as you can see, I'm already uh, on the floating window here. Um, as you can see, I, it is a square, the camera is a square where it should be uh, 69. So I'm gonna change this in resolution, which is at the moment in 640 by 640 to 640 by 360. And now I am in the actual uh, webcam resolution. Uh, well, half at least because the webcam is uh, HD, so it's 1,280 1, by 720. All right, so um, yeah, the other thing that I'm seeing is that I'm flipped, so that's mirrored. Yeah, so I'm, I'm putting my right hand and you're seeing like it's my left, so I'm gonna mirror the, the camera image for that, I'm going to add a module, which is in the Spatial Transformations menu, which is called Flip and Swap. Just going to add it, plug it in the middle, and just invert the x-axis. So now I should be, uh, yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. So as I was saying, we are going to make this kind of glitch machine so for that, um, the first thing we need to know is that we need to split the RGB channels. So uh, basically there are several ways of doing that in vSync. One of them is um, using the Swiss RGB module. And this is going to split our image in R, G, and B planes. 
And as you can see, if I grab a preview, we can see the red plane, the green plane, and the blue plane. And after this, we can create uh, or make several uh, processes per color, per color channel. So for that, I'm going to um, use the displacement module, which is the first module in the spatial transformation tab. This module is going to make, yeah, so uh, kind of spatial transformation, like, like offsetting or scaling it. And as you can see, now I'm feeding the displacement module with the R, with the red channel of the camera image. And I'm going to displace it a little bit to the right, to the left, upwards, downwards, etc. So the idea here is that if we offset a little bit each of the RGB planes and then we compose the image, we are going to make this um, RGB displacement thing. So I'm going to delete all this, make a displacement module per, per color channel, And then to compose the image and actually make a color image again, I'm going to use the RGB mixer here. That as you can see, if I feed the green channel to the green channel of the RGB mixer, the red channel to the red channel of the RGB mixer and the blue to the blue, I'm going to create exactly the same image of the camera. So that's perfect. And this is happening because I actually haven't done any spatial transformation uh, to, the, uh, to any of the RGB channels. So uh, for example, if I offset a little bit now the red channel, as you can see, I already start displacing um, the different RGB channels and then when compose, this um, chromatic aberration effect uh, appears. Awesome. So how is that we can automate all this? Because there are no modulation inputs in the displacement module. So the way we do this is by controlling externally vSync modules, that is with max messages, standard max messages. So I'm gonna grab the LFO the LFO module has two outputs. The first output speeds an image. So you can see it's a black and white image, in this case, oscillating like a sine wave. And the second outlet speeds a number, which goes from zero to one in the, in the wave of the sine wave. If you don't believe me, I can add here the um, the extras, the data scope module. So you can see that here it's coming out a number that goes from zero to one periodically in the shape of a sine wave. So with this number is that we are going to control actually the, um, the offset of our RGB channels. So we can scale here the number, let's say scale zero to one to, I don't know, minus, minus 0 0.03 to 0 0.03. And then we can create a prepend X or basically an X dollar sign one, which is the same. I just prefer to use it prevent X, and then we just send this to the inlet of the displacement module. And as you can see, the red channel is automatically displacing with the sine wave. Great. Um, so what happens if I actually uh, duplicate this? Let's grab 
another of these ones. Let's actually create three because we have three different channels. And the scaling, let's you know, leave it the same. And as you can see, now the three uh, modules are displacing at the same time. Okay, yeah, this is cool. Well, but anyway, I really don't want the sine wave. I want more steps. So let's create some kind of a noise or sample and whole thing here because the sine wave is too predictable. So here the, the LFOs have a sample and hold waveform. So I'm gonna select that waveform to each of the channels, to each of the LFOs. I'm gonna add again the data scope object. So you can see actually the sample and hold here. Um, it's really slow, let's make it faster. Let's make all faster. Yeah, so now I'm displacing each of the RGB channels independently with random values. So as you can see, now I have, you know, uh, at least the, the seed of this glitchy effect, right? So yeah, so there's one thing that is bothering me here, which is that the displacement is actually really smooth. It's not steppy like the sample and hole, which is, you know, which goes from one value to the other one in a one step. It's not interpolating values between um, one, uh, one step and the other one. But the thing here is that when you are controlling these in modules externally, you're actually controlling the knob and the knob in vSynth is driven by the V-line object. Here, I'm gonna make a parenthesis here for max users. So when you're, when you're controlling the modules externally, you're controlling the knobs and the knobs are driven by the V-line object, which is pretty similar to the line, which interpolates values within a certain time. It is pretty similar, but instead of um, interpolating the values within a certain time, it interpolates the values with, uh, with the frame rate. Well, in this case, with the frame rate, but with banks. So for example, I don't know, let's say that the line goes from zero to one in one cycle, right? So in one second, we go through all the possible values between zero and one. With the B line, it's different because let's say it goes, it starts in zero and let's say something like this. So for instance, the six here is the amount of banks. So let's put 60 actually. So now if I put a one, so I, wanna, I want to transit from zero to one in 60 bands. So I'm gonna put one here and nothing happens. And that nothing happens because the B line needs a band to spit out the next interpolate, the next value of the interpolation. So let's grab a band here. And each time I press a band, as you can see, uh, the value of the B line increased. So I have to actually make 60 taps now to get to the to the one. Almost there, yeah. So yeah, so this is what, and well in BSYN this is actually uh, triggered by the receive draw, which is the master metronome that comes from the render. Uh, and well, you know, eventually what happens is that you, I am interpolating the values inside the modules. And that's why when you control the modules externally, um, there's going to be an interpolation always. And this is going to affect, in this case, um, with the displacement, which is not hard. It is not steppy. It's all interpolated. It's smooth. And I really don't want that. So yeah, so I'm going to finish 
um, now we feel with this effect, with this, uh, with this patching, but we actually gonna make this a little better in the next step. So basically what you have to do now is to, okay, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to erase all this because I really don't like the way of doing this displacement. It is really smooth, the transition uh, of, the, of the RGB plane. So I'm gonna delete all this. And I'm actually going to use uh, the RGB displacement module, which is uh, perfect for this case because it actually displays the RGB planes. Um, you can do this by hand, as you can see here, but also it has modulation input for every uh, parameter here. So what I'm going to do is to fit with the same LFOs the X coordinate of the RGB displacement and nothing happens. That's because all the knobs are in zero. As you can see, the knobs here of the RGB displacement works as an offset if nothing is connected, but they work as an attenuverter if something is connected on the modulation input. So, uh, for example, if I, I'm offset some, uh, I mean, I, I'm offsetting now the red plane to the left in a fixed position, but let's add now the sample and hold. So as you can see now, um, the sample and hold takes control of the position of the red plane. Awesome. So here there is a, a simple menu to change the range of the knobs of this module. And I think that, you know, one is a lot of displacement. So I'm just going to put all my knobs to have the top value in 0 0.1. So as you can see now, the maximum displacement is uh, less. So I'm gonna make it even less displacement. So there's perfect. And I'm gonna do the same with each of the X coordinates of the RGB displacement. Mm -hmm. So I have green displacing and I'm having blue now also displacing. Just for a little numbers, okay. That's much better. As you can see here, we don't have any smooth transition and I shouldn't have uh, deleted uh, what I was doing, so I'm gonna just add it again. Sorry for this. And let's compare it a little bit here. Um, let's just, you know, displace this one. And let's grab the RGB mixer again. And I'm gonna add a preview. So let's compare a little bit um, how 0 0.03, 0 0.03, prepend X. Let's just compare this and let's put this even more. 0.1, 0 0.1. Yeah, well, I don't know if you can notice this, but on the left, it is the smooth offset. And as you can see, there's an, a, a, a really simple uh, bouncing there, but it is not the same as the image I'm getting in the right, which there's no interpolation, there's no bouncing. It is that just the red plane going from one position to the other in one step. There's no interpolation there. so. You know, actually the, the one without interpolation is the one that I want to get this glitchy effect. The interpolation actually looks cool, but it's not that glitchy. So anyway, we are not using uh, for the time being the displacement module here, but I'm just going to leave this patch 
because there is also I have I have just seen, thought of another way of doing this effect, and I'm just going to leave you this there. All right, <clears throat> so back again here. We have, uh, yeah, so I was saying, you, the displacement without interpolation, and that's perfect to make this kind of glitchy effect. So I'm gonna get all these knobs again open. So I have the RGB planes offsetting individually with different random values by the LFO. And after this, I'm going to add another displacement because I think that what is what lacks this uh, effect it's uh, some kind of a noise so I'm gonna add here the displacement 2 module I'm gonna insert it in the middle of the RGB displacement and the corner pins and I'm going to grab a waveform generator in order to um, use the noise to displace the entire image and you are going to see what I mean by that so now from the waveform generator is coming out the sine wave, a vertical sine wave, and I want an horizontal noise. So yeah, so now I have there my horizontal noise, and with that, I'm going to displace the whole image in the X axis, okay? So I'm gonna grab the output of the waveform generator two and connect it to the X modulation input, all right? Okay, so the displacement module, well, it's it's a big one. I'm not going to explain uh, this module, but you know, here is the initialization point, which means uh, the point from where I I'm going to start to modulate. This is I just want to leave this fixed because I want the image on the center of the screen without any modulation. But if I click the initial point, I change the knobs and the displacement depth appear, which is perfect because I'm, I want to modulate now the image. So I connect the horizontal noise to the X modulation input and let's see what happens. Yeah. So now I'm distorting the image um, with this noise. I make this really unrecognizable. So I'm gonna, you know, I actually am going to change the range of the knob to 0 0.01. So add just a little displacement with noise. And I'm going to increase the frequency of the noise, which means the amount of lines we see on screen. Yeah, it's kind of subtle, but you can see now that all the image is, you know, crossed with these horizontal noisy lines. Right, and yeah, okay, I can modulate a little bit more. So the effect, it is more glitchy and we are almost there. We are almost there. Um, okay, awesome. So I'm gonna take a sec to read you guys before I continue. Okay, so I'm gonna answer this in Spanish because you guys are, are asking in Spanish si el video va a quedar, va a quedar subido. Eh, voy a tratar de hacer esto todos los fines de semana, así que van a quedar subidos y, y eso. Okay, so I can think now of, of creating some more stuff. Um, like the, you know, The thing which is obvious to add here is a luma key because my background is all white. So I'm gonna add here a luma key. Right. And I'm going to start cutting the whites. And now they are replacing with nothing but noise. Just going to uh, connect the output of the waveform generator to the second texture input of the luma key. So now the whites are replaced by noise and we are getting to a really cool um, noise effect here, or kind of glitchy stuff. 
So yeah, so there is a lot of things you can do now because I mean, I just, <clears throat> I just add um, the noise, but I mean, you can add a sine wave and it's going to be really a different effect if you have the sine wave on the back than a noise or other waveforms, you know? Um, so I'm actually gonna add another waveform generator so I can have my horizontal noise here to make the spatial displacement, but I'm going to have another waveform generator to actually uh, replace the whites of my image with. So now I have the noise here, the first oscillator is the noise, which is displacing the X coordinates of the, uh, of the RGB displaced camera image, all right? And the output of that is going to a Luma key, and I'm cutting out the whites and replace them with a sine wave. Cool. So now I'm going to replace the, this waveform for a square wave. And let's, let's put this in diagonal. Let's increase the frequency. Change the pulse width. Okay, I'm liking this. And let's modulate actually the waveform generator to, I mean, the noise of the waveform generator to, uh, to the face of the square wave, to add also the noise to the square wave. All right. All right, yeah, awesome. So I can think now because, um, yeah, so the, the, the glitch looks kind of cool, but it's actually, I mean, the, the RGB displacement is only happening to the webcam and it's not happening to the white stripes. Uh, you might want this or you might don't want this. So just to make a change here, um, let's actually grab our RGB displacement kind of algorithm made with the three LFOs. So first let's um, displace our image with the noise, then grab, uh, I mean, cut out the whites and replace them with the, uh, with the diagonal square wave and then let's RGB displace everything. Uh, so I'm, I'm using now the RGB displacement little algorithm we made here with these four modules, and I'm changing it from, uh, I mean, from the top of the processing chain to almost to be a post-processing effect because I already have all my image uh, working and I just want to RGB displace everything now. So this is how this looks, sorry. Okay. All right, so as you can see now, everything is displaced and also the white stripes are being displaced and this, um, and this really, it's more a glitchy kind of thing because we also have the white stripes now um, with different RGB offsets so this is um, this is so much better than before. I, I really like this uh, more than the the previous version of this really simple yet I think effective kind of glitch um, effect. Again, you can change the waveforms from uh, the the waveform generator going to the to get different um, to get different results, you can also put two noises. Now I have the two waveform generators in noise, and the image is really really noisy, which is awesome, but might be uh, breaking this transmission. Or if you want to upload videos with this kind of noise, you might uh, fuck up a little bit uh, compressors. So. But anyway, I mean, you can do whatever you want here. Uh, just uh, change different parameters. I mean, we start with the RGB displacement on the top and that makes some kind of effect. And then you, you know, just by simply uh, moving that to the, to the final of the image processing, 
chain, you know, the, the effect looks totally different. So yeah, that, that's one thing to take into account. And maybe to, to continue a little bit with what I was saying, you know, minutes ago, um, there's another way I can think of making this kind of effect, but it is, you know, it needs a lot of more modules, which I don't think, you know, it is, um, I mean, having the RGB displacement, it's awesome because you have packed there the RGB uh, switcher plus the RGB mixer plus a lot of displacements uh, all in one just here. But one thing you can do is instead of using the displacement and and changing, I mean, controlling the modules externally with uh, standard max messages, what you can do is to grab three displacements, which is a lot. I think it is a lot. It's not that much, actually. And yeah, so it's one per, it will be one per channel. And the difference between the displacement and the displacement two module is that the displacement two actually has modulation input. So uh, you can send the texture output of the LFOs uh, instead of the data output, because you are we are not going to control the knobs. We are going to actually modulate the coordinates here. So it's totally different, uh, and the and it's I mean this not. It's not going to bounce like when we control uh, the modules with messages. It's going to do the same thing that it's, go that it's doing the RGB displacement. And let's just check out that. And let's go to modulation depth. Let's change here the range of the knobs so I don't make any. And as you can see, I'm going to um, yeah, grab this, send it here, and the output for the Luma key. And as you can see, well, I, I have to make this a little more obvious to you. All right, so as you can see now, um, yeah, so while well, that's a lot of displacement, but here is another way of doing the same thing we are doing with the RGB displacement, which is grabbing an RGB Swiss, three displacement, two modules, and the RGB mixer. But, you know, of course you are not going to do this because you have the RGB displacement module already, but if you, if you want to know how the RGB displacement is made or how uh, I came up with this algorithm, uh, you know, you can always prototype vSync modules with other vSync modules, which is kind of great. So, yeah. Uh, so that's the glitch um, machine here, kind of. So I'm going to read you again, guys, uh, to see what you have been up to. How the capture works to export videos. All right. So... Okay, guys, if there's no any question about this uh, RGB displacement kind of a thing glitch uh, going on, I'm gonna let the, 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 com the, I mean, the deconstructed algorithm from screen, and I'm just going to leave here uh, what we were doing. And I'm gonna, I'm going to be sharing all these patches for free uh, to my Patreon, so even though if you, if you don't wanna uh, uh, subscribe to the $5 tier. You can always subscribe for my free stuff. These patches are going to be online uh, later in my Patreon, so uh, you will be able to grab them from there. So there's a question about Lawrence about how the capture uh, object, well, module works, uh, which is uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Even though I, I mean, every time I upload videos to to Instagram, I actually grab the screen 
Uh, I'm going, maybe if you want, I can show you how to do that. And because uh, for me, it's, it's the best way. Or if you, are, if you don't want to capture your screen, you can always, um, Uh, use Siphon Recorder or Spout Recorder, if that even exists. I really don't know if there's something like Spout Recorder, but, you know, I guess so. Um, anyway, so there's a module here which is called Capture. Uh, the, the middle and the most right inlets are for stereo audio, so you can actually um, export a video with audio, uh, but here, since we are not um, making anything with audio, I'm just going to grab the output of the RGB displacement, which is my last module before sending it uh, with the corner pins to the floating window. So I'm gonna grab just the RGB displacement output. I'm going to uh, plug it to the most left inlet of the capture model, which as you can see, it says texture in. So once you do that, you can just, I mean, you can, uh, you can choose here between different codecs. I'm just going to go with, um, yeah. Yeah, this one, it's okay. You, I, I, sometimes I work with Apple ProRes uh, 42, but you know, the MP4, this, this H264, or I'm, <laughs> I'm not really used to, <laughs> to say the name of codecs in English, but yeah. So that's, that's fine and 60 FPS, it's perfect. And yeah, then you just uh, choose right. This window will appear. Let's grab desktop. I'm going to say here, test for Lawrence. And I'm going to record. So once you press enter, I'm actually already recording. So this is all being recorded except the audio. And when you want to stop recording, you just press stop and I guess there is now, uh, yeah, this is a mob in my desktop. I don't know if you're watching this, yeah. So there's a, a, um, a video in my desktop with the video I have just recorded out from Vsynth. And that's how easy it is to uh, record a video with the capture module. Um, but, you know, this module can be uh, kind of, um, heavy to the computer, so <clears throat> because it's ev everything on mostly everything in Vsync is running on the GPU, and when you start recording, everything is going to the CPU, and there's a bottleneck there uh, with this module. So in general, what I do is to establish the resolution I want to work with. Let's say uh, HD resolution. So I I change that on the render. And after that, you know, you, you can see here in the render, we have the, you know, the first two are the texture resolution, but the next two are the window resolution, this one, the floating window resolution. So if I'm working <clears throat> on, a, on an HD resolution or whatever resolution I want, for example, in Instagram, I also, I usually work with 800 by 800, which is a square, but since we are working with the webcam here, let's get back to uh, HD resolution. Oops. And the window resolution or window size should be half of the texture resolution. So let's uh, put here, uh, this is uh, 640 by 360. Yes, so once I do this, now I grab my ScreenFlow, which is the best software for uh, grabbing stuff, and I'm just going to uh, select an area I wanna record. In this case, let's put this in HD, or yeah, that, that would be fine. And I press record and then grab my window inside the selection I'm recording of the screen. And you know, I just let this record. And once I want to finish, I just press stop. And the amazing thing of ScreenFlow is that this uh, video editor appears. So I can just 
uh, grab this and cut out the parts I really don't want. Okay. And yeah, then just export this. And, and as you can see, it's going to be exported in well, almost HD uh, because I cut out a little more uh, of the screen. But uh, this is the way I usually work, which is recording the screen. It's, maybe it's not the best way, but you know, for me, it's the more practical. And, but the only thing you have to be careful with, with this technique is just to set your window, your floating window size as half of the texture resolution. Um, please trust me in that one um, because I use that every day. So, but anyway, you can also work with the capture. Uh, the thing with the capture module is that it's really CPU intensive. So uh, it might, uh, you know, drop a lot of uh, frames when you work in, uh, in that way. Uh, and the other, the other way, I don't know if I have Siphon Recorder. Yeah, I have it. So the other way is to use Siphon Recorder. So for that, I'm going to add here, uh, oops. I'm going to add here um, a Siphon server. And automatically in Siphon Recorder, we have uh, receiving the texture from this in. Uh, okay, and here in the preferences of Siphon Recorder, you have to match the dimensions of your video with the with the resolution you're working with VSYN. And in, the, in this case, they already match. And then you just press record. And yeah, and this is the third way to, uh, another way to record stuff from, out from VSYN or out from Max in any case. So yeah. Is there any question, guys, you have? All right, so I guess this is going to be all for today because I'm running out of light already. And thank everyone for watching and listening. And I will probably be doing this again next week. So remember to go to my Patreon in a couple of hours to download these patches. And, and you know, if you have any suggestion or anything you want me to talk about in next live stream, please drop me a line. Um, as I said before, these uh, this are not going to be tutorials. If you want, you know, a more step-by-step -step guide to be seen, please uh, check uh, in the description the link to the Music Hackspace workshops are starting next Wednesday. And yeah, so these are going to be me just patching around and uh, sharing with you some techniques and practices with VSYNC. I hope you have fun and see you in the next one, guys. Thanks.